Welcome to episode 15 of Game Dev. We look at what we did last episode, if I take a look at this. In the last few episodes, we actually finished up the sprite class and rendering in a, an actual sprite to the screen. Uh, and we can add more of these sprites just by adding them here. And I'll offset this one, maybe one on the Y. And we'll offset this one, one on the X. And the Y. So we'll see here, we'll see three sprites. Okay. And again, we're rotating the camera with this, so the, these actual sprites aren't actually updating their positions themselves. So if we were to do something, like take out one of these sprites, I'll take out these two. Uh, if I take out this sprite on its own, and I create a new sprite up here, I'll just call it base, and we go base equal to U, and add it. If I actually go and edit in the base right here, and I go say base dot, um, Z plus equal to time. If I do something like this, it's not actually going to change the size of it. And if I go and uh, print this out as well, you'll see that it does update, and it, the value is actually changing. But the actual screen image is not changing at all. Right now it should be getting very, very, very far away, but it's not. So that's a little bit of a problem. So we're going to be doing a few things to fix that. Something else you might notice if I run this again here, it's not actually capturing my mouse cursor at all. It's not a, it's not an actual game, kind of. So if we were to move it around, we, we wouldn't have this. So I do want to have some sort of input. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to make you to be able to resize this based on your scroll wheel for now. So this will get closer or farther away based on your scrolling. So first things first, what we need to do is we need to add a new library here. Uh, you can either add it straight into the source here, or you can add it like this. I'll do it with a source, and we're just going to go game, loop, and any. Okay, and this is going to add a game loop class. Now this class is very, very handy. We also need to import it up here. So let's do import package game loop, and we want to do game loop HTML, okay? That's going to allow us to create a game loop object. So we're going to go game loop HTML, and we'll just call it game loop. And this is going to replace all these, uh, where are they? Request animation frames, it's going to replace all of that. So in the start here, we need to actually initialize it. So let's say game loop, equal to new game loop HTML. And we pass it the canvas. Okay. And then we go down into the, and then we go down into the start function and we get rid of the window here. And we're going to go game loop dot add timer. And we go make it call the render function. It'll call it every 0.001 delay. And we want periodic equals to true. Just to let it run on a set time. Uh, right here, instead of taking double, this takes a game loop timer. Timer. Okay. And this time value, uh, we'll actually create that again. That's going to be equal to timer.gameloop.gametime times a thousand, just so it's in milliseconds again. Okay, so now we'll see that we get the same value with this, and we can actually remove this now. And then we just go game loop right here, dot start. And that'll actually start the game loop. So now it'll just run that render function over and over and over again, and you'll see that this value is still increasing, just as it was. Next up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna need to change the sprite class a little bit. So you see right here, this is where we we're telling WebGL exactly what the uh, data is for the subtyped. And we're actually going to take that out here. And I'll tell you why right now. This data, although we can change it on the fly, we're using these variables here. So what we want to actually do is we want to make a void set function. And we're going to pass in the float32 list and an int offset for that. Okay. And what this is going to allow us to do, it's going to allow us to manipulate an external float32 list data set instead of just this internal one, and it'll just set all the variables in here. So the add sprite function, we just want to add, set the index to it just so we know. Then we're going to go into the render function here. We're going to create a variable, we'll call it to replace, and we'll just call it sprites.length. And we're going to say if to replace less or is greater than max sprites, sprites and to replace is equal to max sprites okay and then we're going to go in a for loop we'll go into i is equal to zero zero i is less than to replace i plus plus okay so now we're going to loop through all of them and we're actually just going to set them again so sprites 
uh, at i dot set. We'll set the vertex data, and the offset is i times loads per vertex. I don't know why that's not showing up. Times four. It's the same as it was. And the vertex data, we actually need to create that in its own variable here. So we're just going to take it out here. We'll do float 32 list vertex data. We don't actually need to change the index data because the index data will be staying the same because it's just the, the way in which we're rendering. Uh, we'll set it equal there. And we'll just say vertex data here. Okay. So that'll set all those variables here. And now we actually just need that buffer data subtyped here. So we'll say gl dot buffer oh, wrong one buffer subbed type data this one and we say gl dot array buffer the offset is going to be zero and we go vertex data dot sub list zero and to replace times floats per vertex times four as float 32 list. Okay, so that should do that. Vertex data. I was wondering why that was going on. And sublist is actually a lowercase l. Okay, so that'll allow us, if we go back to the main, you should see that everything is kind of the same. But now the z is going to get smaller, so, oh, bigger. There you go. So it just kind of flew off the screen, so it does actually update now. I can slow it down like this. Add some more zeros in there, and that was a little way too slow, but you do see it does get bigger. So now we're actually moving sprites on their own accord, okay? Uh, and now what I want to do is I want to change the z value, not based on the actual time, but I want to change it based on my input. So my input's going to be my mouse for here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up to where I was doing this. The on resize thing, and I'm gonna go canvas dot add event listener. We're gonna make this mouse wheel, and the listener is just going to be uh, let's call let's create a function called scroll. Okay, and we'll just put it up here. Void scroll. Now this is gonna take an event called a wheel event. Event. Now we're going to set up this function. You'll see if I do event dot, it will have a bunch of different variables. All we're concerned about here is the delta y, which is the y movement on your mouse, so up or down, and the where is it detail, which is just a long variable that kind of describes the event. So let's set this function up. So we're going to say if the event dot delta delta y if it's greater than zero, that means that we're going in, or event dot detail is less than zero, then we're going to go z scale is negative equal to 0 0.25, else, and we're going to do else if z scale is less than or equal to negative 1.0, just because we don't want it to go off the screen, so z scale is plus equal to 0 0.25. And then since I'm being a little bit lazy today, we're just going to go in here and we will say uh, base dot z is equal to z scale. So now if we run this, we should see our little applet. Again, you'll notice that the right now the mouse is not encapsulated, it's not uh, contained to the canvas here. But if I click it, my mouse goes away. And when I scroll in here, you'll see that it gets bigger. And as I scroll out, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until we can barely see it. So that's it for this episode. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I just wanted to get this quick in and in here just so we can actually uh, set this up for next episode for the actual tile mapping. Uh, if you guys want the source code to this, this project or you guys need, have questions or want to contact me on Skype, check the Patreon link in the description below. You guys can check those out. I uh, post the source code and all the, the episodes actually a week in advance on there so you can check that out if you want early access to the content. It's not required, it's just, just there if you need it. Thank you for watching and have a good day.